Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome to another yes or no pick a card reading. You got piles one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and number ten. Okay, card number one. Seven of Cups. I can't give you a yes or a no on this one. Seven of Cups is all possibilities. All timelines are out before you. You. This really shows that you are confused and you don't know what to pick. And here you are looking for a clear yes or no. You're seeking that out from the universe, but the universe is telling you, we're not going to give you a yes or, a yes or no. The Seven of Cups is always a maybe, but more than that, it is... Any of your possibilities are possible. It is everything is open. So you're going to have to find a way to navigate this using your own discernment. And the tricky thing about that is when the Seven of Cups comes up, you're having trouble with your discernment. That is why you're manifesting the Seven of Cups. But this is the universe reflecting this back at you, telling this is when you need to learn your discernment. So Depending on what you're asking about, maybe you need to make a list of pros and cons. Maybe you need to do a lot of detailed research and amass a bunch of facts and data. Maybe you need to just wait and see how it unfolds. Sometimes with the Seven of Cups, if you just wait, if you just sit, um, sit and wait and see how everything unravels around you, the course of action will, be, will become more clear. If this is something... You're asking about, like, should I do this, you know, today <laughs> or something? If you're wondering, like, what to do immediately. One thing that I sometimes practice is I just sit and not even really meditate. I just kind of sit and be still and quiet. And I wait until my my body kind of gets up and tells me what to do. Sometimes if I'm not sure what to do next, I just sit there in my chair and I wait and wait and wait, and then eventually the impulse will hit me, and I'll get up, and I'll find myself moving, and I'll find myself going to do whatever. And then I that's how I know that was, that's one way for me to hear my inner guidance. So you not, you guys need to be tuning in both to your inner guidance and your discernment to <laughs> figure out what to do on this one, because the universe does not want you at this time. That's the thing about Seven of Cups. You are not supposed to get a clear yes or no. You're supposed to figure this out on your own. So I'm sorry to give you this disappointing answer, uh, but I know you guys can figure this one out without any extra help. So good luck. Okay, card number two. Ten of Swords. There is no bigger, fatter no in the deck. This is absolutely a no. You can see this. I think that's a peacock. Peacock with his feathers, his tail feathers down has been shot with 10 arrows. This is the party is over. The game is done. End game. Game over. Like <laughs> the book is closed. The kitchen is closed. Everything is done. You <laughs> sometimes with with nose, there is some wiggle room um, and you don't even and you figure, OK, I'll just going to exercise my free will and I'm going to get around this. I'll find a creative solution and I'll show those cards what for. Uh, no, nah, with the Ten of Swords, I've tried. I've tried to turn the Ten of Swords uh, like, I've tried to defeat it. I've tried to get around it. I've tried to turn it into a yes. It never happens. It never happens. The Ten of Swords is the biggest, most clear, most absolute no in the deck. So that's basically the end of that. I don't have anything else to add. This is a big fat no in capital letters. Card number three. Justice. This one has been coming up a lot lately <laughs> in these yes or no's. The usual answer for this, and some of you may have already gotten this card in one of my other readings if you've been really looking for an answer. Um, your answer depends on how excited you are to see the Justice card. If you feel like you've been taking advantage of, if you feel like you need Justice to be on your side, if you feel like the scales need to be rebalancing in your favor because you've been in your integrity and you've been doing everything right and you don't have anything to worry about, then this is a yes. This is everything is coming back to you because this is the scales balancing. This is all of the energies evening out. So if you're owed something, if you need somebody to set something straight, if, like if you're owed an apology or whatever, this is everything working out good for you. If you have been living, you know, being your best self, if you've been doing everything the way you know you should be. But if you've if you're worrying about something, if you're trying to hide something, if you've done something you feel a little guilty about, this is 
the sign of you need to get your shit together and sort that crap out before the universe does it for you. So if you're nervous about the idea of justice being served, this is a no. But if you are excited about the idea of justice being served, this would be your yes. Card number four. The Tower. Okay, so for just your clear yes or no, this is a no. <laughs> um, if you said, am I going to get that job? Am I going to get that apartment? Am I going to get that partner? Whatever this is, if you're asking about some specific outcome, this is a no. The, ta <laughs> the Tower comes up to tell you, like, don't even try. That is just going to crumble. That, that whole timeline that you're looking into is crumbling. It's not going to manifest. Um, but there is a much, much bigger picture when the tower card comes up. So it, it's like it's saying that question that you're asking is so small beans that it's not even worth worrying about. That problem is just the tip of the iceberg. You have a much bigger uh, transformation underway. Something, something about the foundation of your life is about to shift. This is your tower moment. This is the tower card. You're welcome to your tower moment, guys. So it is really timed when you see this, especially in a yes or no, it is time to really zoom out and get out of worrying about the minutia. Get out of worrying about the little events in your life and look at your bigger picture. This is time to do your soul searching, to go on your personal journey, you know, whatever that is. If this is a spiritual journey, uh, a career transformation, some kind of transformation in your personal like f family and romance life. This is big, big shifts underway. And although the tower can usher in those transformations in a really traumatic and chaotic way, uh, it's just a catalyst to clear out the junk so that you can step into a much more more aligned way of being. And the tower, your tower moment only needs to be chaotic and traumatic if you if you fight it if you can lean into the transformation and really double down and go okay this is the tower moment this is when my whole life need to, needs to shift if you can just work with that and work through that uh, with as much ease and grace as you can then it, this will go a lot more smoothly for you if you try to fight it uh you're just gonna prolong it but i mean do do whatever you need to do you know um with the tower moment Part of the whole tower moment is actually learning to deal with these catalysts. So try to lean into this transformation as much as you can. But um, yeah, just for clarity, this is a no if you're looking for just a, a simple yes or no. But try to see the bigger picture here because major things are shifting. This is your tower moment, guys. Card number five. Nine of Wands. I really see this as a no. Sometimes the nine of wands can be a yes. It depends on the deck and the situation. So take this as you will. But this guy has clearly been beat up. He's bleeding. He's bandaged. Uh, but yet he's still fighting. Why are you guys still fighting? You're still in the struggle. You're still in the battle. And you're feeling really, really defensive. And you just want this to end. But it it's like it's not over yet. So... With the Nine of Wands, we always have to ask, is this battle still worth fighting? Is this still worth fighting for? And for some of you, maybe it is. There's there's never like a clear universal answer for that. But this is your time to evaluate. Like, should I cut my losses or should I keep pushing through? Do I keep pushing through on this one? Sometimes, you know, if you can get through the Nine of Wands, you get to the Ten of Wands, which is that card of exhaustion and burden. and But it's also harvest, so... This is where I don't want to confuse you guys. I might be giving you mixed signals here. Overall, this nine of wands is a no for the answer to your specific question that you asked. But the bigger picture, um, this card is inviting you to figure out if you need to cut your losses, if this battle is worth fighting for, or if you should keep pushing forward and try to get to the, to the finish line and try to get to your harvest. And that is going to vary for all of you. But yeah, you guys are definitely kind of black and blue from going through a long, 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 long struggle feeling really defensive and like you're building up walls around yourself. So that is the bigger issue to look at here. But your simple yes or no, I'm going to give you a no on this one with this particular card. Card 
card number six. Four of Cups. This is a no. The Four of Cups is, an, is a sign that you are not sufficiently grateful for what you have. It is always the card of a lack of gratitude or taking things for granted. You're just not appreciating what you have. There's something that you were taking for granted. I almost sometimes think of it as like the first world card. <laughs> it's like the first world problems card. You're sitting around, you know, somebody who has who has an apartment, you know, who has a TV and a couch and a fridge and a shower and they have all the things that they need, but they're sitting around going, you know, this apartment isn't nice enough. I need a new couch. I need a bigger TV, yada, yada, yada. Well, you know, okay, so you get the nicer apartment and the bigger TV and the nicer couch. And then you just go, okay, now I need a house. I need a house. And then you need to fill your, your house with stuff. And it's kind of ongoing, ongoing. So yeah, this four of cups, it's, it's always just, you guys need to practice some gratitude and figure out what you're not appreciating. Even if your life isn't that great, even, you know, because first world people, we can still go through periods where our lives suck, but try to put that into perspective. And <laughs> sometimes with the four of cups, it can be useful to think about how much worse your situation could be. You know, we go, oh, this can't get any worse. But when we say that, that is almost always a symptom of a severe lack of imagination. Things can always get like way, way more worse. So if that helps you, if it helps you to imagine how much worse things could be, you might appreciate what you have more. And also just, you know, practice gratitude. Just every day, think of one thing you're grateful for in your life. Um, even if that is your, you know, your couch with a bunch of holes and stains on it, at least you have a couch, right? Um, so yeah, this is always kind of that little bit of a sulky, like sulky teenager energy, but the four of cups is typically really passing. So this is a no, but whatever you're asking about, I don't think this is a very big deal. The four of cups isn't, it's not a big deal card. It's a, it's a little deal card and it comes up and you kind of go through that energy and then it passes, you know, just, it, it flows away on the wind. So don't, don't worry about this too much. This is a passing energy, but it is a no for now. Card number seven. Queen of Pentacles. This is a yes. Wouldn't you like to be this rabbit with this flowing robe with the crown and the pentacles? This is finally stepping into your abundance, being almost like the head of your household. The Queen of Pentacles, she can do it all. She is somebody who, or, you know, this can be for guys too. Um, so this is, this is a being who, you know, can hold down their career, can hold down their love life and their family life and still have time on the weekends to, you know, relax and kick back and have some time to themselves. The queen of pentacles can have it all and can do it all, uh, it, cause she is the master of balancing her material world. So this is a really good sign, especially if you're asking about, uh, money or career or your housing situation, any of that material stuff um you know she's kind of like the archetypal matriarch and she has her shit together and you know for men you might be going why did i get the queen and not the king it's just that i mean the kings and queens i see them as pretty interchangeable i don't it's not so much necessarily masculine and feminine as extroverted and introverted the queens are more uh internalized and more more independent actually and more introverted so this is just more concerning you you as yourself the kings would be more uh, that rippling out to your environment, but the queens is just, this is an, more of an internal thing or more personal thing. So for anybody who's more masculine, you can just think about it that way. But yeah, this is a yes. This is great. This is who doesn't love to see the queen of pentacles, right? <laughs> so that's awesome. Card number eight, temperance. This is a yes. This is some, you guys are do, going through a lot of internal alchemy. This could be a spiritual awakening or a paradigm shift. This is, you're bringing all of the strands of multiple, multiple different areas of your life are all coming together and you're creating something new out of it. It's, you can think about it as you're baking a cake. You know, you start with a bunch of ingredients that aren't good on their own. Flour, like raw flour, raw cocoa, raw eggs, gross, right? But you put them together and you bake them and then it, you come out with a chocolate cake. How beautiful, right? So that is what you guys are doing. You guys are alchemizing something or baking something. You're putting, taking a bunch of different ingredients and pulling them all together. But this is really happening 
Um, like with the magician, that would be happening literally externally. For you guys, it's happening internally. You're bringing together strands of yourself. Really, like I, I actually just saw somebody, um, like a being who was split into, you know, many, many different facets of themselves and they just clicked all into place. You're, you guys are literally bringing pieces of yourself back together. You're picking up the pieces and putting yourselves back together. For some of you, this could be signaling um, like finally getting your life together after a long, maybe like a journey, maybe that lasted, lasted lifetimes and you're finally completing a soul cycle and bringing yourself back together to meet yourself, bringing different facets of your soul back together. This is reclaiming soul fragments. Some of you even a soul braid experience. This is a yes, especially this is a wonderful big deal sign for anybody who is asking about their spiritual journey. This is this is temperance. This is awesome. This is a yes. Card number nine. Knight of Cups. This is a yes, but we have a little bit of a caveat. The Knight of Cups can be, he's the messenger of love, the bringer of happiness and joy and wine and parties, that kind of thing. So this could be somebody blasting into your life, uh, you know, trying to sweep you off your feet. Uh, if you're asking about love i mean this could be you or this could be your potential partner or you know the energy can be going either way or it could be almost like a cupid energy like bringing you two together to sweep you off your feet and take you off on some crazy adventure so this is a yes this is emotions running wild this is uh emotional fulfillment opening up for you but there is as you can see this particular knight of cups literally has his head in a bubble so the knight of cups in all decks always has an element of getting carried away with himself or letting his emotions override his judgment, his logical, rational mind. So just be careful. You know, you could get too carried away. Um, this doesn't typically manifest as something disastrous, but it could be, you know, you drank way too many shots last night <laughs> and, you know, you're going to be in bed until 6 p.m. the next day. <laughs> um, or it could be, you know, waking up in a stranger's bed and feeling like you want to sneak out the window or well run out of the room while they're in the shower or something like that. So, um, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, be paranoid or be worried about that because this is a yes, this is a wonderful energy. And, uh, you know, it you don't want to clamp down on your happiness and your joy just because you're worried about some potential repercussions. You still want to run with it. You still want to totally embody and enjoy that rush of water that is going to carry you away on this journey. But just... Keep keep a little part of your mind aware for when you're going a little bit too overboard. If you see yourself going like off the deep end, just notice that and try not to let yourself get like too out of control. Just be aware of that just a little bit. So, but yeah, this is a yes and you guys are ready to have some fun. Definitely. Card number 10. Five of Cups. This is a no... This is the fish for a head. <laughs> this is somebody feeling alienated, lost and confused, divided from the world, but also divided within themselves. Uh, somebody who just can't think straight, just can't think clearly because, you know, this is, it's pictured as a fish for, for a head. So yeah, this is a no. And anybody getting this five of cups, um, it is time to do a little bit of heart healing. If you guys are feeling really, you know, any kind of heartbreak, any kind of pain, uh, like emotional pain, that is your opportunity to go through your heart healing. So whatever, whatever you just thought of, actually, try, you need some closure on that. Uh, try to process that, you know, that could just be sitting there, really sitting with it, feeling it, feeling your feelings, having a good cry, working through it just on your own. It could mean going and having a conversation with somebody. If this heartbreak has to do with somebody else, you might need to work through that in a conversation. Um, and sometimes even just running into them and talking to them for a few minutes can be enough to provide that closure for you. I mean, and, and this, I'm not even just talking romance. I'm talking like old friends from high school or family. Um, or for some of you, it is things about your past, like dreams you feel like you, you had to give up on. Um, yeah, if you had to give up on a dream because you got pregnant or because you had to get married or because you had to move, something like that. Any of your dreams you gave up on, you're really feeling a lot of regret about that. 
uh, you need to process through that. This is this is coming up so you can work through that, so you can get closure, and then so you can move on. You're going to feel a lot, a lot, lot better that you don't stay in this five of cups forever. You don't have a fish for a head forever. You work through this. And so work through it. You guys know what it is. Whatever just came up for you. Work through that. Go through that. That is going to literally like pull blocks and plugs and crap out of your heart chakra and open you up. And then you can get on with your life again and you're going to feel so much better. So this is a no, but the bigger message here is, you know, go through your healing, whatever it is for you guys, work through that, get your closure, get reconciled, and then move on into your brighter and better future. All right, I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.